Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Ubrit Workshop. I've built a new bench and in the process I wanted to install uh, a really good woodworking vice. So I looked around and I've ended up with the one that I've chosen. Uh, but my criteria when I was looking was very simple. I wanted a vice which did not uh, have problems with racking. And that means when you put something in which is uh, not symmetrical, piece of wood at this end, the vice doesn't distort terribly uh, uh, as it tightens on that piece of wood. And similarly, if you put a piece in as I've done here, it doesn't distort that way too much. They will distort a bit, you can't get rid of it completely. But that was one issue. The other is I wanted a vice uh, which had a quick release mechanism and it had to be simple and easy to use. Now watch this, there's no lever on this one. I've undone it, so there's no tension there, just pull that away. Very easy indeed. And I now just pull this or push it to wherever I want it to go. Now I did look at a number of different makes, uh, but I've ended up with this one. It's uh, sold under the Axminster name. It's made in Europe and I think it's a really good vice. I'm really, really pleased. It's not the cheapest vice on the market, uh, but that little bit extra that you pay, I think is really worth it. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install this vice. Now, the vice I've selected for this bench is the Axminster Quick Re Release Woodworkers Vice. And there are three sizes, and I've decided to go for the middle size. That is normally 225 uh, millimeters across here. What I need to do is to set uh, the rear face into uh, the top of my uh, piece of wood. And I've actually marked it out already, uh, what I need to uh, cut out. Now, when you're uh, fixing a vice like this to a bench and you're doing uh, an inset uh, for this uh, rear part of the vice, you need to make sure you've got about a millimeter gap uh, above it. And the reason for that is as you tighten the vice with it being uh, screwed on to here, uh, it's quite possible that this uh, rear face will distort very slightly. Don't worry about that, that's quite normal. will distort very slightly and therefore you need to give it a tiny bit of room above. Otherwise, uh, if you are tightening something up really hard, uh, this top piece of wood, which is above the vise, might uh, in, in itself distort. So uh, allow an extra millimetre there. Now I'm going to cut this slot here uh, and I've set my writer up so the cutter depth is just shy of where I want it to be because that will be for my finishing couple of passes. And I've put a fence on here so that I can do it in chunks as I go through. I've put a clamp here and here and I've measured the distance from the edge of the cutter uh, to this edge of the fence and the same at the back and these will act as stops so as I'm doing that cut I don't need to pay too much attention to where I am. Now if you're going to make the bench the way I'm going to do it using this vise, you will need to take the vise apart at some stage. And it does appear to be a little bit daunting to start with because you've got these uh, bolts at the end here which look as though they should be undone so you can slide things apart. But of course uh, the, the handle uh, is actually uh, on permanently as far as I'm concerned because the ends of the uh, pin that goes through there have been pinned over. Uh, so uh, we now need to look at the other end to see if we can take it apart and I'll turn it around. And at this other end uh, all we have is a plate here and the plate has a pair of holes, one for each of the uh, bearing shafts here. And then uh, for the screw thread, there is just a simple circlet there, uh, which is the only thing you need to remove. And I'll just do it very gently. I, I've used the screwdriver uh, just to prise it up. Do this gently and if it does spring off as it did with me just then, make sure you don't lose it because uh, there's nothing worse than not being able to put something back together again. So put that somewhere safe. The other thing I would suggest you, you do at this stage is to uh, take a photograph so you know uh, where uh, things are. For example, there's a plate here which I'm going to take off shortly and for some reason, I don't know why, it's got an extra hole. 
uh, so it may be important that the extra holes on this side. Now the two screws holding this plate on, and these screws are number two Phillips. Do not try and use a posi drive uh, because you may well damage the heads of these screws. Uh, put that to one side. Uh, you can now see this clever gadget here, which is the, the, the thing that makes the uh, quick release mechanism work. Now, uh, note that it has a screw there, uh, which is at the handle end of the vice end. Okay, that's all you need to remember. And maybe you should take a photograph with your mobile phone. That's what I've done. Anyway, so we've done that. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is to slide this plate off the end here. Slightly stiff. It's a very good fit. So that's that plate slid off. And again, take note of the way round. Uh, I've put an arrow here, which points towards the top of the vise, which at the moment is down on the bench top. And that means that these chamfered bits here are at the bottom end as well. So I'll put that to one side. And now I can slide the whole of this part off. Now it is a good idea to wear uh, some form of protective gloves because everything is covered in oil. And I'm carefully putting that clever gadget to one side. So we now have the rear plate, uh, which is the one that's fixed to the bench top, and we've separated it from uh, the rest of the vice mechanism. And reassembly is just the reverse process, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Now I've made some measurements of this particular vice, and I suggest if you buy a vice, even if it's the same one, you should make your own measurements. Now the diameter of these shafts are 25 millimeters with this particular vise and the diameter of this screw thread is uh, just under 24. So what I've done is I've measured where their centers are and I've drilled holes, the one in the middle for the uh, thread, I've made that 25 millimeters. So it's about a millimeter bigger than that. And the ones for these 25 millimeter shafts I've made 27 millimeters. And this now is my, will be my template, which I'll use for cutting all the nice pieces of wood. And I can now put my template into position. It just allows me to check that it is the right fit. And, and that's fine. There's a little bit of clearance around each of these. So I'm happy with that. Now, when it comes to fitting the vise, one of the key things is to make sure uh, that it's on a pretty solid fixing. And so what I've done is I've created uh, this block and it's made up of two pieces. Uh, one is of oak and the other is, um, I'm not sure what it is actually, but they've been glued together uh, and uh, they will be screwed together as well. And these holes here are so that I can uh, put screw holes through this main block uh, into uh, the bench and it'll eventually be screwed and glued in place. And it's the exact thickness required uh, to bring uh, the main body of the vise, the top of it, uh, within about a millimetre of that recess we made earlier. Now at this stage, let me explain, this recess is now uh, wider than it was before. And the reason for that is I've had to redesign the bench very slightly. And I want to move this all the way that way. And that's the idea. I want to bring this to the center of what will be this portion of the bench. It's on the other side, of course. So um, I'll fill this in with a little block of wood later. It won't show. And the next thing to do is to mark on this block here where the four bolts are going to go. And the bolts I'm going to use are these pretty uh, big coach bolts. Uh, and I'm going to embed these into the block so that there's no a coach bolt head uh, appearing on the top of the bench. Slight risk in that, but um, I'm quite happy. For now, I need to uh, mark where these holes are going to go, and the diameter of the holes need to be 12 millimeters. So with, with this casting clamped to my uh, block, I'm going to mark the four hole positions now. And I can now take this to the drill press uh, to drill it all the way through. 
Now I've got to do a counter bore now. In, in my case, it's got to be about 35 millimeters in diameter uh, to take the head of that coach bolt. Uh, now drilling into an existing hole uh, with a force now is very difficult because it's center point, can't grip anything. So I've made this little uh, template up. It's fixed to the top with this clamp and that now allows me to uh, start that uh, drilling process off. And there are those holes uh, drilled out now, so those are ready. Now you do need to check that there's not a rounded fillet in here, which might require you to round off uh, the edge of the block. In my case, uh, with this particular vise, uh, that, that's fine. There is no, no fillet to worry about. And with these clamps again holding this all the way back against the block, uh, I'm now going to seat uh, these coach bolts by tightening this up. And what this is doing is forcing the square section of the coach bolt into uh, the uh, block of wood. And when it's fully tight, it really is tight. And so this method will work. I, I said that there was a risk in using coach bolts which would be embedded in the structure. That risk was that these could perhaps turn. And I'm pretty sure that because those uh, heads of those coach bolts are so big, that once there's tension in the thread through the nut going on, that that will hold everything together. And that is working. So I'm very happy with that. Because of the nature of my design, the rear face of the vise is here and it's flush with the whole of the front of the bench. And that means it has to be inset here. This piece of wood is bigger than it needs to be. Um, and it also means that when the top is put on, the top's gonna to butt up against it here. So I need to make sure that this is cut to the right size. I'm gonna just pop the top on here so I can butt this up against it. And then I need to calculate where the holes need to be in here uh, for the vice mechanism. And the next thing I've done is I have now drilled some holes through my block so that I can put screws in into the bench itself. I've repositioned this back where I want it to go. And now I'm going to put in four screws, to keep the block in place. And the reason for this is very simple. What I need to do is to put the block and the bench top, this whole thing in place so I can then make a judgment where uh, these holes should be drilled in my vice face. And I want the vice to be central to this opening here. Uh, I'm now going to offer up the front and I'm going to see if I can get the positioning of these bits absolutely spot on. Now, in order to help me get the positioning of these holes uh, absolutely spot on, this is a 25 millimeter drill bit and it fits just inside these outer two holes. Now, you may not be so lucky depending what vice you're fitting, but with this Axminster device, that is exactly as it is. The inner hole is slightly smaller, but as long as I can get the positioning of these two holes, on my uh, vice face, which is going here, that will help enormously. And I tapped the end of the Forstner with this hammer to make a good indent, and then went in with a wax crayon and put a, a mark just to give me an idea where to look for that little dent. And if you remember this template I made a while ago, uh, then I'm using that now. And I'm just feeling for the point. This is the 25 millimeter cutter. Just feeling for that point, it's there and it's there. And I'm now going to screw this template in place. I'm now going to take this to the pillar drill and drill those out. And there that is, and uh, it looks as though that fits uh, pretty, pretty well. I've obviously got to trim this off now for height here and then um, smooth it down. And I've just used the same template uh, to do the face. I, I've got the uh, piece which is going to be fixed to the head end of the vice, this end here, uh, in position. 
Uh, it's yet to be trimmed off for height this way, but I've taken this opportunity to glue onto it a, a strip of mahogany, uh, which will be a backing strip, uh, and that uh, helps to cover over some of the metalwork at the back here. There is a rise and fall uh, stop on this vise, which I will not use, and so I've covered that over. It won't be possible to use it uh, after I've done this. And then I'm going to put a couple of uh, extra pieces of wood, uh, one going down this side, one going down this side, and they'll be tapered, and that will then finish off uh, the, uh, this particular face plate of the uh, vise, and I'll then trim it um, for shape. Uh, near the bottom. So this is my front vice face at the moment and you can see the outline of where the, the casting of the vice goes. So what I'm now going to do is just to cut this out neatly and smooth this uh, off so that it looks tidy. And what I've done is I've marked symmetrically uh, two points where I'm going to uh, drill and I'm going to use a 20 millimeter a uh, forstner cutter to put a hole there and a hole there and then on the bandsaw I'm going to cut in from there and cut across here. I'm just putting some backing pieces which can be used to screw this faceplate uh, in, into position uh, to secure it. It doesn't need to be secured very tightly but it's just uh, to stop it uh, going walkabout when it shouldn't. I've put one in place, it's held in place by clamps and my clamps also serve to ensure that the faceplate is flush with the front here. So I've had to put a little notch in this here because the, the rail which is below uh, the faceplate is 23 millimeters thick and this is uh, 20 and so that takes account of that difference. I'm being careful when I'm putting this glue on here not to allow any to go onto this face which will be uh, coming into contact with the actual face piece itself. Now I'm not sure if you can see it but on the back of the vise which is currently fitted onto the bench there are a couple of protrusions, one below there and one below there and they're about six millimeters in diameter and their centre is about five millimetres below uh, the uh, entry point for those two shafts. So I've marked that on my faceplate here and here, and I'm just going to use a six millimetre brad point a bit just to uh, take that down uh, by about three millimetres. I'm now doing the final fixing of the vice main body, the rear, rear part here, uh, to the bench, and after this uh, I won't need to touch that again. I'm going to check my tightness of my bolts as well at the same time and I'm going to do the trimming of the ends of these pieces of wood after the uh, whole thing is complete. Now if you're thinking of putting bench dogs into uh, the fabric of uh, the bench itself uh, then you do need to take very careful note of where all these screws and also uh, the coach bolts are. You may recall this uh, little place here where I cut uh, the slot for the uh, rear part of the vise in the wrong place. Well, I'm just putting a piece in there with some glue. Uh, and whilst that glue's going off, I'm just gonna pop this piece uh, into place. Right, I'm now gonna just put the vise roughly in position and I'm going to just put it on like so. Now I'm trying not to get to too much grease and oil on my hands. Right, okay, so that's it roughly in position. Now luckily I, I took a photograph of uh, how this piece should go and uh, so I'm, I'm now able to put it pretty much as it should go. When it's in the right place, it actually starts to, to bite. And once that's out enough, I can now install the plate and hopefully the spring clip. Well, that spring clip was quite tricky because uh, I had to operate under there. It wasn't uh, quite as easy as I had hoped, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it could be. And I'm now just gonna plane this down uh, flat here and uh, so it's a flat wood bench top. Now 
That's it. That's it spot on. Well, that's super. I can now do that final saw cut along, along that uh, edge there. Now, I'm really pleased with this vise and the way it's turned out. It was very easy to fit, as I hope you've seen, and um, I, I think it's going to give me many, many years of excellent service. But initially, when you get a vise like this, because it's been effectively in a cardboard box, perhaps for several months, uh, the grease and oil that's on it to keep it uh, looking nice uh, sets a little bit hard. And I found with this one that initially it was quite tricky to make it to go to and fro. And so what I did was I applied a bit of oil of my own uh, and then exercised it a bit. And that made a huge difference. Now, in case you're not familiar with this style of mechanism, there is no quick release lever on the side here, which you might be familiar with. Instead, there is a very clever gadget inside which detects whether the vise is tight or not. And I'll now give you a, a quick demo of the vise using this piece of wood. First of all, uh, to hold a piece of wood, you push the vise up like so, get it where you want it, and then crank the handle. And that now is nice and tight. I can't move that at all. To take the piece of wood out, just undo it in the normal way, and there it goes. And once you've done that, you can now move the vise freely again. And, and there it is. It's a lovely bit of kit. I really, really do recommend this. I think it's absolutely super. Now, I have made sure that the top can be removed as can the vise. Nothing is glued in permanently associated with the vise, nor uh, with uh, this mechanism and so on. So the top itself can be removed. This is replaceable. There are two screws that hold uh, this part on as well. Mm -hmm.